so I'm going to demonstrate for you how to use two tools that ultimately allow you to grade with a rubric um, on a Google Doc. So when a student is turning in their writing on a Google Doc, um, what these two tools use simultaneously will do is allow you to grade with a rubric and then it'll um, push the results back then to students. So we're going to use Gubric. Think of that as a play of words with Google and rubric and Doctopus, which is document and octopus. So it's like grabbing a bunch of documents, right? So I'm going to do this using a um, Honors American History rubric of a targeted writing assignment. So because I'm, I'm bringing this up because I already have the rubric here, right? Like this is how I'm grading students with a rubric if I were um, collecting or even printing just this and then hand grading it. Well, I don't want to hand grade it. Right, like they didn't hand write it, so I don't want to hand grade it, but I want it to be authentic feedback. So here's what you have to do. Have open your existing rubric, and then you need to open a spreadsheet, okay? And title that something that makes sense to your brain. And because I'm using this to grade all students, I call it a grading rubric. And what you need to do is establish um, kind of the fields in which you're going to grade the rubric. So across the top, you want to start in the second row, you want to establish how many points each one is worth. Okay, um, and let me, so across the top you'll have point values, over on the side is where you'll have your categories. Okay, so with this rubric, it's already established, I'm going to have four categories. So what I'm going to do is just copy this here, establish the setting of the essay, briefly introduce the reader to the subject. I could make this much more complex, but I'm not going to um, for timing purposes, right? It, the rubric is fine as it exists, so um, that's the way I'm going to do it. Um, and that is worth, I'm going to go back over here, one point. So it's either going to be they get zero points or they get one point. Oh, and it's established being underlined for the whole darn thing, deck on it. Okay, here we go. Um, so I'm just doing some formatting things here. Sorry if it's confusing, but, um, and I'm going to bold that. Okay, so establishing the setting, you either get the point or you don't. So that's only going to be zero or one point. Now the second one is the same exact way. So provide an insightful comment that establishes the basis for analysis. So um, insightful comment, I'm going to bold there. Again, that's either zero or one point, so I can keep that. Now the next one is out of three points, so provide a partition because we're asking them to write three different statements, so they would get um, one um, point per statement there. So what I'm going to do is I know, okay, that's out of three points, so zero, one, I need to add two and three there. Now. I'll kind of explain this later but um, and show you a way that only 0 and 1 will show up for establish the setting. I'll get to that in just a second. So let's finish um, plugging all of these in, finish the paragraph with a clear thesis statement. Going there, make that wrap and uh, I don't want it underlined. Okay, so I'm going to just bold thesis statement. Again, this is all stuff of if you want that to be to be different. So that one being um, out of two points, okay? So um, I do have some examples, but I wanna put in here some wording about um, what each number value will kind of constitute. So um, I'm just gonna put here, no setting established. Established. Whereas one point would be um, setting is established and sets the stage for the essay. Something like that, okay? I'll probably go back and finish that later. But it's only out of one point, so I only wanna include a descriptor for each of those there. Whereas the thesis statement being out of two points, let's say um, thesis statement makes a clear and appropriate to the topic. So a clear, I'm going to change that, a clear claim appropriate to the topic at hand, right? Um, and this one I'm just going to say no thesis. So I would finish by going through and making sure that all of those are filled out based on the point value. 
So here I would put um, three partition or subtopics statements are included in the introductory paragraph because that's out of three points, but you gotta make sure that you fill in the other ones as well. Okay, so that's what I do as far as my grading rubric. Now, what you're gonna do is go back in your organization in Google Drive. You're gonna wanna create a spreadsheet for each class that you will be grading. Okay, so I'm gonna be grading this in three different classes. So I'm gonna title this Targeted Writing Intro Paragraph Sheet, let's say. Um, bell one okay so and then I'm gonna go back here and create the exact same one for bell two and bell three now here's where you need to have an add-on so you're gonna go up to add-ons and mine is already there it's called Doctopus but if you don't show that there you want to go to get add-ons and just search Doctopus and add the add-on there so once you have Doctopus added you'll hover over Doctopus and click launch Sometimes this takes a minute, so please have your patience handy <laughs> because um, the working, it takes a little bit to work. So you wanna set this up before you're even ready to sit down and grade it. I normally do this before I've even collected it from students, okay? So it takes you through each step. So step one, I want to use Doctopus 2. What do you want to do? Well, I assigned the assignment on Google Classroom, um, and really that's the only way that I'm going to explain is using it. So I assign the writing assignment with a Google Doc that students um, type their essay into. So I'm going to ingest that from Google Classroom. It's then going to pop up in step two where I establish, okay, which class so this is for first bell, so I'm gonna bring in Honors American History first bell. Then you wanna select the assignment. So it's the most recent one for me, um, the targeted writing practice. And this is where it kind of takes some time because it's ingesting right now every single Google document that is attached to that assignment. So each one of your students. So that's gonna take a little bit of time. So then what I do is go back and do the next spreadsheet and I established that for Bell 2 and I launched Doctopus. Okay, so if you notice back in my Bell 1 sheet, it found zero turned in files. That's okay. I'm gonna go ahead and ingest that assignment because as it's gonna pop up their work as they're working on it. It doesn't really matter if they've turned it in or not. Um, it actually might be better if they don't turn it in because then they still have editing rights if you're wanting them to go back and edit based off of your feedback. So again, the ingest assignment is what um, takes a while, but ooh, look, it's working pretty quickly. Notice that I did not type anything, but whoa, look at what it brought up. Um, so, so cool. And that you see all of my students, and then the link here, that is the link to their document. Okay, so it kind of looks like a lot right now, but we'll I'll kind of take you through how you're gonna do this. All right, I have to keep dismissing this. Um, okay, so what you want to do is attach Gubric. Your Gubric is that grading rubric that we just created in a spreadsheet. Okay, um, so I'm going to fast forward through all of this, but I'm going to go ahead and finish creating this right now. Okay, so you see that I went ahead and finished this um, Gubric is what it's actually called, but what's really nice is that if one of your team members set this up, you can just share it with everybody um, giving them editing rights, but then they can use it. So, okay, let's go back to that spreadsheet. And you're going to want to attach Gubric because I, I want to attach that rubric to how I'm going to be to each of these documents when I go to grade it. Um, notice up at the top that there's now Gubric for students. Um, I do remember that not being the greatest at the end of last year, but it could totally rock our socks. Now I'll just have to kind of look into that. Okay, so recent is taking a long time. So I'm gonna go to my drive um, and I'm gonna click to select a spreadsheet from my drive. Um, and I notice, oh, there it is. Targeted writing intro paragraph grading rubric. I'm gonna select that. And then you have some options. You make rubric viewable to students. Yes, I want to do that. Allow self and peer assessment. I would like to do that. And I'm gonna look more into how that applies to Gubric for students and then send email notifications to students. Yes, I wanna do all of those, so I'm gonna attach the rubric, performing the magic that does take some time. 
um, and you notice that there's a whole nother column now, which is assess document, okay? And that's where you wanna go to assess their document. If you just wanna see what they're writing, you can click there. You can also do that in Google Classroom. Um, but if, let's say that everybody's turned it in and um, I want to grade this. I'm gonna hover over Morgan's here and click that document. And it's going to bring up some really cool stuff. So you notice at the bottom of the screen here, I've got Morgan's paper. So I'm gonna scroll down to where I can see her introductory paragraph, which is this first one right here. And then look, here's my criteria of how I'm grading her based off of that rubric I made. So does she establish a setting of the essay briefly introduce the reader to the subject, yes or no. So I could click zero or one. I don't wanna do, well, I'll just go ahead and click one. Yes, she did it. And then I go to the next one. Did she provide an insightful comment? Sure, she did. Did she do all three? Mm, I only see two. And then does she finish it? Well, how's her thesis and that grading? So I'm gonna say it's not that great. Here's where I can list comments, anything you want to tell Morgan, and then if you want the, e the scores to be emailed to Morgan um, or to each student, you would click Submit. Okay, upon um, clicking Submit, then it'll email them and it'll advance to the next student. Okay, so if I were to click Submit right now, it would email it to Morgan, but I'm gonna click Next because I don't want it to email it to Morgan yet. And if, if I click Next, it's gonna go on to my next student and bam, I'm done. Like, how cool is that? So students are gonna get my feedback via email. And then back here, what you'll see, I'm gonna X out of this, is you'll see their grade over here. Um, what you'll actually see in the end is the um, different grades that they got or what number I selected in each section. So what I normally do is I'll add and um, insert one right and I'll say, um, sum just so it's different than grade and then I'm going to highlight this and insert the function to be the sum and that then becomes their grade so that's what I'm going to then copy into so that's then what I'm going to copy into progress book and that's it um, it's kind of wonky it takes you a little bit at first to kind of get the hang of it um, that's why I'm hoping this video kind of helps you through that process but once you get it down there's no more carrying papers home um, there's no more giving a piece of paper of feedback to your students that they just throw away it creates more conversations with your students and that's how you use Gooper Conductibus good luck let me know if you have questions